Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the sixth round of the Finn Invasion Radical Championship here on Glacier TV. Wilmington, along with Yoni Backman and Kevin Bluewood, we're going to get set to go racing in about 10 minutes' time. Um, we are racing here today at Watkins Glen. We're on the classic version, so Yoni, a total of seven corners for these drivers to figure out. Yeah, and a ton of drafting to figure out because I was watching uh, one of the uh, races that happened earlier today. Uh, in fact, I've watched like three races and uh, the drafting is excellent uh, today because the wind is pretty much neutral, like two miles an hour north, which is the, uh, basically the old default weather. So uh, the draft, draft pretty much works uh, as it should. So uh, we, can ex we can expect to see a lot of lead changes and uh, a pack fighting. High temperature, 83 degrees Fahrenheit. We've got 37% race humidity for here. Um, and cloudy skies. So, as you said, pretty much perfect conditions for racing on here today. Normally wind of 2 miles per hour. Going to be racing for 25 minutes. Um, really important today to just keep an eye out on your surroundings the entire race. Because you are going to have cars going to the outside of you down into the carousel. You're going to have guys trying to flick themselves to the inside of you into turn 6 and 7. And you've just got to make sure that all these drivers hold a line this entire race. Because it doesn't matter if you get past. There's a good chance you're going to be able to get your way back past them a little bit later on. Absolutely. And uh, uh, what we have to remember is that due to the nature of the track, like you said, only a few corners and insanely long straightaways, these guys are running with minimal wings. So uh, uh, what I've seen, from what I've seen in the previous races, uh, the car is extremely slippery under brakes and uh, during cornering, so uh, it's going to be not just a matter of uh, who, uh, setting up yourself to, uh, to the draft, but uh, the car control in the corners is, is crucial because I saw um, in, the, in the previous races, I saw like through the whole field, um, like uh, um, field level uh, taken out of the equation, they, they still had extreme problems in uh, especially the last two corners. Uh, which lead to the uh, front straightaway. They they, they had, uh, uh, I think Enzo Kanta was uh, leading like 15 seconds and he was basically coasting uh, half the corners and he, he, he almost uh, slammed himself into the tires in the last corner. And the thing is, because it's such a high average speed here as well, these guys won't go lower than about 60, 65 miles an hour the entire race. It means that if they do get a little bit wide, they do have to stay on the brakes a little bit longer. If they do get sideways, that 10, 15 miles an hour is huge at a track like this. And, you know, you've got three real, um, you know, 90 degree um, corners. Turn number one, turn number six and turn number seven. Pretty much all 90 degree corners. But turn seven, Yoni, A, you've got to get yourself a good run onto that front straightaway. But also, you've got no room for on the outside except for a huge tyre barrier. Yep. And uh, what as for what's going to happen in turn one? Uh, I think Riku is a perfect guy to answer that question. Um, Riku, you've been driving at Malaysia. Now you've got to come back to race in Simworld, and you've got to try and survive turn number one. Yeah, I guess that would be the problem. If judging by the last race, I did a practice race and two hours ago, and someone decided to hit my gearbox on lap two, turn one. Now, of course, drafting is going to be important here today, but that breaking into turn number one, a lot of guys will try and outbreak themselves. Use that runoff very on the outside of the corner, which means that you've really got to have a lot of heads up driving. Is there anything you can do if someone outbreaks themselves um, in the front part of that pack in the first couple of laps? Um, well, if you're lucky enough to see it in the rear, rear view mirror, you just have to, you know, move away and hope it doesn't hit you. <laughs> but, uh,. Yeah, it's going to be difficult if the field is packed. Um, before um, we let you go, um, talk to Yoni in Finnish about how much you love chicken. Nasi goreng ayam dua. Kuulostaako tutulta? Uh, enpä tiiä, mutta kuulostaa hyvältä. Jo. That's all. There we are. So 17 guys going to be racing here today. Of course, we're doing this broadcast in both English and Finnish. We've got Kevin Bluewood with us. He'll be with us in a couple of minutes as well, Yoni. Um, and of course, I don't understand a word of Finnish. Um, well, actually, I didn't understand about six words of Finnish. You should have learned Finnish by now. Don't back you. That's about what I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, of Let's course, I can't the use better. the translation for that. Shut up, Ricky. Off you go. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Loves the, that the love story continues, but uh, let's do like a quick, quick intro in Finnish. Jotenka, 
<köhön> Täällä taas ollaan Malisian reissujen jälkeen äh, Radical Finvasion Season nelosella radi- Radical SR8 auto siis kyseessä ja tällä kertaa viikko 6 Watkins Glen Classic eli yksinkertaisuudessaan kaikkien yksinkertaisin rata layoutti Watkins Glenin radasta ja tota, <köhön> Kevin Bluewoodi tässä suomalais-englantilaisena kommentaattorina eli Ai, puhuu tässä nyt sitten kumpaankin kieltä meikäläisen kanssa, niin tota, Kevin, rähti odottaa. Yeah, good evening. Joo, hyvää iltapäivää vaan kaikille. Ja kyllä on niinku erittäin, erittäin jännittävä kiso tulossa. Et Watkins Glen paljon suoria ja ajetaan pienellä siivellä. Ja mä uskon, että tullaan varsinkin näkemään tuolla taakaan suoraan jarrutuksessa tosi hyviä ohitustilanteita. Sieltä suoraan draftista päästään sisään mutkaan late breakingilla. Tulee ole todella tiukkoja taisteluita ja ohituksia siellä. Jep, ja tässä niinku just Riku kerkäsi tuossa englanniksi sanomaan, niin öö, peränajoja saattaa käydä muutamakin kappale, koska minimisiivillä, että täällä tosiaan ajetaan radaluonteesta johtuen, ja kun minimisiivillä ajetaan, niin auto on todella, todella liukas. Ja sessiosta saadaan kuva ihan koht sillään, mutta in the meanwhile, let's go back to English. Yay, don't forget this race is brought to you by the Wooden Dave Show, Friday's 4 p.m. Eastern, live and exclusive on Glacier TV. We have got ourselves about two and a half minutes left of Shut Up. Um I am got two and a half What? minutes left of practice, and sorry, I had someone screaming on my ears there. Um but grid out front, Ricciola Talis can pole position by just one one thousandth of a second over Omasato. Yeah, actually, he was overall second in the, in the, doing the qualifying, but Enzo Bonito, for some reason, cho- chose not to uh, join the grid. So, yeah, Riku is on pole. And one one thousand for the second. You have a look at the qualifying field, as I say. Um, Maurice Dietzel and Diego Comini in row number two. Then you've got Enzo Cantor and Sergio Alvarez in row number three. Timo Hotri and um, Tal Lapine in row number four. Francesco Evanitz Albert and Joshua Harley in row number five. Look at the qualifying times. Um, first through to about 14, separated by one second on the racetrack. 17 cars here today, and that separation qualifying means one thing. We're going to have a lot of close racing here. Yeah, we will. And uh, while we have like one minute, 15 seconds um, left in the warm-up session, uh, speaking of like tight, tight racing, you should, uh, you should uh, feel free to check through the grid right now. I've just run through the grid. Should I run through it again, Pete? Yeah, please do so, because I was uh, busy trying to figure out my PC. Starting on pole position, we're going to tell him in number three, Glacier Racing Car, and time 1 minute 4.055. On my start, so we'll run up in the second position, just one one thousandth of a second further back. The number six machine of Maurice Dietzel starting in the third position, 1 minute 4.183. Diego Comedy will line up alongside him in the second row. Fifth place is Enzo Canto with Sergio Alfaro starting in the sixth position. Timo Hartui in the seventh position. Tom Lapine in eighth. Francesco um, Atriz Albert in ninth. And then Joshua Hardy rounds out your top ten. The rest of the qualifying times up on your screen momentarily. Who is going to win, Yoni? Uh, I would probably go for Riku if he is able to avoid any uh, rear endings in the... Uh... Uh, during the first few laps, when the when the pack is still uh, tightly um, uh, in a tight space, but one, once the field spreads out, if Riku is still ha- has an intact car, I would say the, I would put Riku as a favorite. Okay, so the checkered flag is out, and that signifies the end of practice. The car is going to line themselves to the grid. A standing start for this race. We are here at Watkins Glen International track length, 2.42 miles. There are seven corners on this classic race track. Ignore the boot section. Ignore the inner loop completely. We are going to be flat out all race long. Track temperature right now is 83 degrees Fahrenheit. It is cloudy with a normally wind of 2 miles an hour and 37% race humidity. We'll be racing for 25 minutes here today. And if you're just joining us, Rico Alitale taking pole position by just one one thousandth of a second. Will Vincent, along with Yoni Backman and Kevin Bluewood for this random matchup of English and Finnish commentary. We're going to go racing in less than 30 seconds, and this is going to be the sixth round of the championship. 17 cars lining up on the grid. We're going to set to go racing. Looks like everyone pretty much is lined up now, except for the front two or three drivers. 
Here and we go. We are getting ready. Lights are on. And. Wait for it. Lights out and away we go. The cars are stalling down into turn number one for the first time. Anatale gets himself a moderately good start. But I tell you what, around the outside of him, Omar Sato is going to go to the point there and he is going to take the race lead. Anatale falls in to the second position. Rick Steve's on third. Diego Comedy in fourth. Oh, we got and a break into turn one. And we Reckon have that turn one. Two cars in the wall. Mar Marcus Papenbrock is in the wall and also Joshua Harley. we we'll get a replay of that in a moment because Anatale is on the outside. He's going to have the inside line into the next corner and he is going to take that race lead back as they come down into turn number six. Oh, right, this is that, was a four. that was a brave cut over right, right across the nose. Indeed it was. Luckily there was no contact. That was turn four, not turn number six and Rookie was very lucky there. But of course, we see the drafting come into play. Oh my Sato is now going to get a good run down this back stretch. He won't be close enough, but Yone, he can use this to set himself up now for the front stretch, perhaps back down to turn number one. Yeah, but you have to remember if you get past on the front stretch, then you get re passed on the back stretch. So uh, it all depends on how, you, how well you manage to set up your passes and uh, how, you, how you were able to manage through the corners. Well, you have to remember that Omar Sato, one small mistake, and Morris Dietzel behind him in P3 is going to capitalize. So it is Alitalo from Soto, from Dietzel, from Komini, from Kanta, from Alvarez, from Hosri and Alapanir. They are your top eight drivers and then Albert and Knight and then you've got Kang Neiman who's on the outside. He is currently running in the 10th position. He had a car down to the inside of him. But they are single file for the most part, Yuni. This is that like stage of the race right now where everyone's seeing what everyone else Next has. Step. When they Next can step. make the pass. Number nine car of Nacho the Morning is going to make a pass on Cardi Newman actually at the back stretch right now. Actually, it's uh, Francisco Esteve Albert uh, on the uh, on his inside, and let's see who's going to make a pass. No, he's not. Um, Number nine car gets the better of him. Nacho gets the position. Yeah, um, in fact, that's Morte actually who's making a move up there no, on um, Neiman. And, and by the way, the two cars uh, that ended uh, ended their race in the turn one were Marcus Papenbroek and David Sabo. Yeah, I've already said that. Shut up. Talk finish with Kevin. Poo. Yo, that's that. Uh, Parista ensimmäisestä kierroksesta päästään yllättävän puhtaasti läpi ja Alatalo tällä hetkellä on vielä letkaa Omar Sato kakkosena. Ykköskurvi tullaan Mauri Tietzel kolmantena, Diego Komuni neljäs, Enzo Kanta viides, Sergio Alvarez kuudes, Timo Huotari seitsemäs. Ja tota, Kevin ihan yllättävän, yllättävän siivosti, jätkät on tähän kisaan lähtenyt. Joo, kisa onkin tosi siivosti. Et sinänsä yllätys, koska tuo ykkösmutka on tosi paha, että siinä on todella niinku, aikainen apexi. Sitten niinku, laitetaan... Aina mennä todella leveäksi te exit. Mä olisin uskonut, että se olisi tullut enemmän osumaan kuin kaksi autoa. Mutta toinen heti vaaratilanne nähtiin täällä takasuoralla just tää jarrutus, mistä puhuin ennen kisaa. Siellä tuli just kova drafti, mentiin jarrutukseen ja vähän rupesi auto heijaamaan just siinä jarrutuksen kohdalla. Mut vielä ollaan päästy ilman, ilman uhreja läpi tää kisa ja ainakin äsken auto numero 16 Joshua Hawley oli varikolla. Ja... Joo, jätti leikin kesken. Joo. Oliko nämä nyt sitten nämä autot, jotka kolaroivat heti alussa? Sitä en tiedä, mutta... Ei ollutkaan. Papenbrock ja Saaba Kertes oli ne, ketkä jäi siihen tien ykköseen. Harley Juri, ja Nyman on nyt sitten keskeytti. Taisi itse asiassa keskeyttää siinä kamerassakin, taisi tulla siitä ykköskurvista. Jotain siinä kävi, mutta ykköskurvi ulos tulos jollekin, mutta en sitä sen paremmin nähnyt. Juri, Tässä kuitenkin Enzo Kantakyydissä nyt istutaan, kun lähdetään tuohon pitkälle takasuoralle ylämäkeen. Oi jo, siinä kantaa itse asiassa. Kantaa ihan poikittain ylämäen läpi ja nyt katsotaan. Siinä joutuu melkoisen check-upin tekemään ja to, itse todella... asiassa Omar ja Omar Soto on nyt jostain syystä tippu siellä äsken, mitä nyt tapahtui, koska siinä kun seurattiin tätä pakkaa, niin Omar Soto tippui sieltä kaksi alle viisi. Tässä tapahtui just tämmönen, taas lähdettiin vetämään todella rajusti draftia ton takamutkaan. Tää, mä uskon, että tullaan vielä näkemään todella monta ohjetusyritystä, varsinkin tossa, mutta oh jää, siellä meni joku seinää jo. Joo, siinä on Timo Huotari numerolla neljä seinässä ja... Joo, ja jätti leikin selkeästi kesken. Joo, napataan siitä replay kohti sillään ja... Joo, todella... Uh, Diesel sideways! Diesel sideways there, and that is going to allow Diego Comedy to get past him. And what this is all doing, Yoni, is allowing Rucker Anatello to drive away into the sunset because... Gap last time by 7 tenths of a second now is up to 1.1 seconds on the race track and it's everyone from P2 backwards is fighting. On my side, he's got what, three positions now. Um, deep source off the position, common game of position. No one is going to close up the career of the crowd. Oh, big wreck, 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 wreck in turn, wreck in turn, two, big wreck in turn, two, and to count that sideways. He comes and he collects, uh, I think it was Omar Soto going through turn two and something happened between him and Enzo yeah, Kanta. 
Now Cancer we have two replays got a little to show, bit but... loose. Um, Cancer got a little bit loose out of turn number one. He touched the grass a little bit, and then it would. Um, Sergio Alvarez there. He just tapped him into the wall. Um, it looked as though that Cancer, yeah, Cancer actually came across Alvarez down into turn number two. Alvarez couldn't get on the brakes in time. Hard oh, into the wall there for Enzo Cancer. He is out of the race. I'm having a look at Alvarez. His car is fine for the time being, but he's now got a car which is on his outside. And I think actually Cancer, uh, Alvarez almost had an off there, but he is okay and back onto the racetrack. Yeah, and I have to, looking at the replay, I have to say that uh, Enzo just made a bit bold move, move there, uh, turning towards the inside there, uh, basically cutting it right in front of the nose of the other car. I don't think uh, that was intentional at all to start fighting that hard, but I don't think Enzo left him uh, any chance. Indeed, and that is another retiree out this race, of course. We've got Marcus Papenbrook out, Joshua Hardy out, Terry Newman out, Timo Hotri out, and now Enzo Kanza out. So we're going to have ourselves 12 cars scored still on the lead lap. The last one of them is Antivalent in the number 14 car. But Diego Comi at last lap coming. did close up on Ricardo Tale, but uh, on the outside, Alba is trying to make the move on Alvarez, and he's not going to be close enough, but he might be able to get a better run out of the corner and slip through him down this longest back straight away. He's not going to be close enough, but it's all about momentum at this racetrack. I was just saying, though, that comedy last lap did close up to the rear of Rick Ryder Tyler by a tenth of a second. Let's see what the gap is as they come fast to start finish line once again. For Rick Ryder Tyler, it's it closer. is going to be a 1 minute 4.589 for Adetale, 1 minute 4.320 for Comedy. That is two tenths of a second in one lap. That's the power of the draft right there, and uh, like I was, I was about to say, when the wreck started happening, that uh, uh, if Riku doesn't get the gap uh, beyond 1.2, 1 1.3 seconds, which is the limit of the draft, uh, this is what's going to happen if, if uh, Diego Comuni just manages to keep, the, keep his car on the track, doesn't make any mistakes, he's going to draft his way right back into Riku's gearbox, and he, uh, Maurice Dietzel is going to uh, follow Diego's draft and basically join the party. But at the moment, it looks like it's going to be a top three fight uh, for the win of the race. Indeed, yeah. On my Sato, who's recovering, he's back up into that fourth position. He is closing slightly to the rear of Maurice Dietzel. And if he can just keep up with Dietzel, he might be able to put himself back into contention here, especially as the top three start battling. But it is Alitalo from Comedy from Dietzel right now. They're so going to complete lap number seven in this race. Of course, it's a timed race. And it is 25 minutes, which is quite roughly to about 22 laps of the race back. Last time by, it was a uh, gap was about static there between Alitalo and Comunate. Just a couple of hundredths of a second as the car is coming out of pit road. Although Sarto, however, is closing up on all of them, so it could again be a four car race. Talk finish. Joo, tästä nyt näyttää kolme, kolme tai neljän auton tappelu tulevan, että Omar Soto tässä just tehtiin spekuloimaan, että on kolmen kauppa, niin Omar Soto siinä alusähläyksessä viidenneksi tippuneena nyt tekee nousua, siinä ajoi itse asiassa kolmella kympällä kierroksen, kilpailun nopeamman kierroksen tai ki, viimeisen kierroksen nopeamman kierrosajan kolmella kympällä, Riku Alatalolla kärjessä 104.6, takana 104.6 Diegolla, Maurice ajoi 104.5 kolmantena ja Omar Soto niin kuin ruudusta näkee kolme kymppää siitä pois, tai 20 dieselistä pois, eli tästä on nyt tulossa neljän kauppa ja Diego Komuni nyt tuossa pikkasen ö, vielä on töitä tehtävä, että pääsis kunnolla Alatalon rafteihin ja pystyis vetää ton eron vauhdilla kiinni, se vielä on se ero siinä vähän vajassa sekunnissa Alatalon ja Komunin välillä ja nyt itse asiassa Alatalo löytää suhteellisen hyvän peissejä ja melkein 20 kovempaa kierroksen kuin Diego Komuni kakkosena ja nyt jos Alatalo tuossa, ero pitää tuossa kahdeksassa kympässä vähän aikaa ja Diesel, Morris Diesel pääsee tuohon ihan kommunin perään kiinni, niin siinä itse asiassa Diesel alkaa sitten saamaan vahvempia vetoja kakkosautosta kuin mitä kakkosauto saa ykkösestä. Ja tässä samalla nyt sitten Omar Soto on nyt siinä neljäntenä takana tumman, tummemmassa autossa valkoisen auton takana, niin Omar Soto alkaa nyt sitten vähän hätää kärsimään siinä mielessä, että hän on just nyt siinä drafti rajalla ja siinä samalla aikaan nyt sitten Tom Lanfer vääntää nyt sitten todella todella lähekkäin karuselliin mennään Tom Lanfer vastaan Sergio Alvarez ja siinä itse asiassa onko se Sergio Alvarez joka ottaa nyt siitä viitospaika Tom Lanferilta kyllä näin on vaikka data näyttää ruudulla vähän väärin päivitetään noin Sergio Alvarez ottaa Tom Lanferilta sijaan 5 tyyli puhdas ohitus siihen karuselliin pitkän suoran päähän eikä tule varmasti olemaan viimeinen tuollainen 
one of the things I did actually notice is that Alvarez's car is very, very loose in turn number six. And you talked about this um, at the start of the broadcast, that these cars are running minimum drag here today. Therefore, they're going to be slip sliding their way around the racetrack. And perhaps now that number five car is going to need to close up on this run from turn number one all the way through to the carousel here. Of course, every American racetrack has to have a carousel. Otherwise, yeah. <laughs> it's not a real racetrack, but Le Pinaire is but closing that gap up. The top three is closing uh, closing up pretty rapidly to, uh, with the, uh, amongst each other, but behind them, Omar Soto is struggling to get uh, catch Morris Dietzel in, in uh, P3 because uh, Dietzel is enjoying a draft, powerful draft by from Kumini's car, who is enjoying a draft from Alatalo's car, and Omar Soto is out of these four it has by far the biggest gap to the car uh, to the next car up ahead so uh, uh, Omar is still lapping fast his last lap was one minute 4.2 with uh, with the least draft of the top four so um, I have no doubt that Omar is gonna drag them yeah and that yep. time by he was much faster and he has oh, Rico went wide Rico went bit. wide yeah Rico, this is Ricky yeah. he, he's used to driving wide <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, Riku re really has to hustle up if he wants to lose those guys on position 2 and 4 because Diego Kamini is sticking on his ass very well as Omer's trying to catch the pack slowly but I wouldn't say it would be impossible. P7 change. P7 change coming. Not till Morty has a run on uh, Francisco yep, Albert an and pass. looks like he's gonna... Yeah, that was an easy pass. It almost looks like uh, some of the guys in the back behind the pack are not running uh, the Oh, wow, but drag, so down on the inside. That's coming it. back. I tell you what, though, that is all about that for oh. all the contact there. And that and was exactly what, what happened to Enzo Kanta back there. That was a lucky yes. one not to have the same incident. I tell you what, though, Albert does look as though he's running a little bit more wing because he is much more stable in the corners than some of the other guys around him. Um, however, as they come past the, uh, the line, let's go through the gap. Alitalo's comedy is half a second on the racetrack. Last time by Alitalo did a 507. Comedy did a 433. Three people behind him, a further half second back. He did a 0.569 last time by. But the fastest guy in the racetrack is still on my side And I think as these guys out front start battling, I think that will bring Sorto right back into the picture. Because he is still only 1.5 behind the race leader. Gaskin himself and Diesel. Is down to six tenths of a second on the racetrack, however. So, as soon as Comey and Diesel start battling, we've seen this before. If Peter and Free start battling, Alitalo might need to get the jump again. It's all going to have to be someone to make that move on Richard Alitalo out front. And I'm thinking Comey is just waiting until the last moment to try and do it. Could be the case. And, uh, well, we're seeing Omar Soto in the P4, still trying to fight his way through. Uh, now, Munich actually caught Alitalo well enough to now only 0 .3, 0 0.4 of a gap has to come uh, across the start finish line so we could actually see potential drafting for the lead right now the next straightaway. But I have to say Riku is going fast on the, uh, in, in, in front because he's doing 1 minute 4.4 to 1 minute 4.6s and he doesn't have a draft and the guys behind him are, are doing 0.4 with a maximal draft. It's because he only weighs about 13 kilos. True. Um, but Comuni is a lot closer this time by actually, and it won't be long. You see, already Alitalo is taking that defensive line down the um, back straightaway, and this is meaning that Comuni is going to have to go around the outside. Of course, though, with low downforce, that inside line might not be the fastest way to go into the carousel. And you might think, Kevin, that Alitalo, if he's to actually carry on running that outside line, better grip into the corner, better momentum down to this straightaway might be able to keep that lead position if indeed Comedy tries to make a pass. Could be, be and uh... Are yeah, you, is your name Kevin? Yeah, my name is Kevin actually, yeah. <laughs> you only shut up. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, yeah, um, I've seen Riku taking very different offensive lines through the carousel, but I'm not sure is, is it the fastest way around, but definitely it's slowly keeping the pack away from him. And another place what I have seen on Riku's driving is the turn one. Um, many times he has gone a bit wide when he comes out of a corner, and that makes him to lose his speed when they're starting to drive towards Carousel, and which enables then to the other drivers of the pack getting a massive draft on him, and then he just has to do defensive line again, and yeah. Nice finish. Too wide. Ja sitten mennään rintarinnan ja jälleen kerran on siellä Tom Lanfer ja Sergio Alvarez. 
Ää, tässä Tom Lanferin kyydissä istutaan tällä hetkellä ja kaksi vierekkäin kaverit menee nyt karuselliin sisään ja katsotaan, kuka siitä nyt sitten viimeisenä tulee ulos. Näyttää se olevan Alvarez vielä toistaiseksi, mutta kyllä, kyllä toimii hyvin kaverilla kyllä yhteistyö tässä kilvanajamisessa. Siinä mennään ihan vieren vieressä koko karuselli läpi ja taka suorasta puolet vielä. Nyt Alvarez sitten ottaa sen sijaan viisi haltuunsa, mutta Lanferi takulla tuosta kyllä viimeistä sanaa oli vielä sanonut vai mitä luulet? En usko, että Lanfer on ottanut to, niin kuin, tehnyt aikamoinen sinänsä tyhmiä virheitä, mitä olisi voinut, voinut tehdä toisin radalla, mutta mä uskoisin, että se kyllä vielä pääsee ottamaan Alvarezin kiinni tuosta. Mä uskon, että tässä on vielä hyvä tappelu vielä kehittymässä loppuksi. Ja samaan aikaan Diitsel on nyt sitten todella lähellä, itse asiassa lähempänä kuin kertaakaan ollut nyt Diego Komunista ja katsotaan nyt sitten, tässä alkaa nyt Riku itse asiassa veti nyt muutama kympä hajurakoa tähän Kol- kol- kolmikkoon ja itse asiassa näyttäisi vähän, että onko, onko itse asiassa tota Dietzelillä pikkasen enemmän siipeä kuin näillä muilla, koska Dietzelillä oli 20 eroa kommuniin, kun tultiin tuohon pitkälle suoralle ja se oli 20 se ero, kun oli suora päässä. Eli olisiko Dietzelillä sen verran enemmän takasiipeä, että pysyy kyllä drafteessa, mutta suora päähän ei riitä vaan vauhti, joka itse asiassa tekee nyt oman sototehtävästä todella helppoa, koska hänellä, hänellä riittää kyllä kulku. Ja nyt on erittäin hyvä tämä niin Joo, ilman muuta, että jos hän ajaa oikeasti isolla sivellä, niin silloin pitää päästä noista mutkaisista osuuksista todella lujaa ulos. Mikä nyt on vähän selkeästi jäänyt tuossa Dietzelillä, nämä tiukat mutkaosuudet, niin se menaa vähän koko ajan niissäkin jäädä kommunista. Ja Riku nyt on selkeästi käyttänyt hyödyksi tämän kommunia Dietzelin taistelun tuossa, samoin kuin Omar Soto, joka yrittää nyt ottaa drafteja. Dietzelistä ja ottaakin pienen draftin siitä. Ei taida ihan kiinni ajaa kyllä tässä suoralla, mutta mä uskoisin, että ei enää ole pitkään, niin sieltä tullaan ru- ru- lujasti ohi. Itse asiassa ne, äh, kuvitteleeko vaan vai nostiko soto keskellä suoraan, koska katas kun istutaan on boardissa, niin kattelin nopeusmittari. 264 oli sotolla su- suora huippu ja sitten tippui yhtäkkiä keskellä suoraan nopeus ja taas hyppäsi 264, että nostiko soto tahallaan tuossa suoralla. Joo, ja mä vielä heitän tähän, että toi ihan, mä oon aika varma niitä asiasta, että Dietzelillä ajaa iso siivellä. Lähettiin karusellista, Diego, ei kun siis anteeksi, Omar Soto oli paljon enemmän jäljestä. Päästi heti suorelle, aivan järkyttävä drafti totti heti siitä. Ja Markus Pappenbrook, autolla numero 37, sieltä 13 ajaa varikolle. Joo, ja Jättä... kuusi kierrosta jäljessä. Jättääkö mutta... leikin kesken? Ei. Nähtäväksi jää, mutta yrittää kuitenkin kerätä irtopisteitä tällä kerran siellä 12 6 kierrosta jäljessä ainoana ketään johtokierroksella ole radalla kiertämistä. Ja, ja, ja siitä kuitenkin numerolla 7 ja 12, niin siitä hirveästi miinuksia kisasta tuu kuitenkaan. Mm. Eli tässä kun iRatingia katsotaan, iRatingista puhutaan, eli näistä kuljettajien paremmuuslukemista tai rankingeista, niin tuossa yläkulmassa Strength of Field eli Soft 3837 tässä kisassa. Eli voittaja tästä repäisee sellaiset 240 pistettä suurin piirtein, joka on ihan mukava potti tähän kausipisteestä mestaruudesta taistellessa. And back to the English studio. So, right now it's Ricardo Tallo, he's still in the way by... I said English studio, not the Jake in studio. ...and coming in Reece Dietzel, still in third, almost hard to fourth, and I tell you what, Dietzel's thinking anything you can... Ah, uh, went wide. ...to make a coming in. Riku went wide again on turn one, as I said, um, and finish. Actually, he he g- is going wide rather a lot in the T1, which is costing him time when we drive to the carousel. And as you can see, they're take, trying to take draft from Riku now, who really has to start hustling up if he wants to stay on that first position. I tell you uh, what, they wh- fall coming here. I really am thinking. Oh, 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 oh went wide. Super wide. Yeah, that caused a lot of time to him. But, as but yeah, well, we were speculating in Finnish about the different wing settings that these guys in the pack are using. I mean, uh, from my, uh, I'm not sure if I'm accurate, but it looked to me like on the back stretch that Omar Soto actually was uh, lifting at the end of the straight, not to actually catch these guys with the draft. And uh, I don't know why he would do that because we have five and a half minutes to go. So if he wants to win the race, he better start overtaking fast. But It looks to me like some people are just uh, running too high wing to actually get a good run at the end of this race. I tell you what, I think Sort um, is actually running the lowest wing of everyone because he is getting very sideways now in some of these corners compared to 
Alitalo up front. Yes, Alitalo's going wide, but his car is still stable on the racetrack. Um, yeah. Beatsor and Company, they do look as though they are about even, but Sorte, he is the guy who's running fastest, and he can really close up to these guys, but then he, he say he just lifts off, and I'm thinking that if he wants to get past, he's going to have to do it now. We've got, what, three laps, four laps left to go in this race, and he needs to find a way of getting past. In fact, he's got a good run now Five on Maurice Dietzel. Five laps to go. And he's got a good run on Maurice Dietzel. He's perhaps going to have to try and go around the long way if he's going to make the pass. Now well, he's trying to the pass. Yeah. Try and don't make the pass uh, there. If he would have stayed at the draft, I think he oh, would... Oh, did Alitalo just go sideways oh. there? Because the field is really backed up behind him. Yeah, because I was just going to say that another thing why Alitalo is going way too wide at the corners, he might have pretty worn tires already as we see actually what, these tires don't wore up that much if you just don't overdrive them uh, they just well that's heat. true that's true but still i'm good speculating run, good that. runner for omar soda right now by the way yeah mm -hmm. indeed if, yeah he's got very good draft to the carousel right now oh and, and he, he's lagging out a little bit where as well yeah. but i tell you what um, he's gonna go for it get Morris very is taking, sideways detail is taking very good draft from Community too, trying to escape from Soto. Soto makes a very very good decision and stays behind Paris. I I have to say that Ryan turns now picks Soto up last time by Soto is now yeah. going to go to the outside. outside. Side by and side. And he has a draft now from Riku. Soto has a draft from Riku, so he's too wide in the foot. Oh, and wow. The not. Wow. He, yeah, I, that was a wise move from Maurice. He just yeah. backed off knowing that if you want to go too wide over there, that's going to be trouble. Now, good thing for Omar Soto. No! Oh, oh almost. The wall. Oh, my God. And he's off the track. He's off the track. Keep it on. Oh, my God. That was close. But what that's done is it's put Diesel out of the race and it has put Soto out of the race. They are very close now to losing that draft. And with what three laps left no, no. to go in this race, they're, they're I good. think it's they're a two-horse race. They're all, they're all good. One second between Community and Diesel. He might actually increase it by one tenth going over this. Actually, now Omar Soto's job became very easy because Diesel surely is going to lack their, lack their straight line speed now that he has a one second distance to the drafting partners ahead of him. And here comes Omar Soto, and he surely is going to make the pass right now. Yeah, down to the outside. This is do or die uh, time. He's going to pass on the next Pick corner. the speed. He's going to pick yeah. the speed. He's going to keep no, he's the speed. Not. Oh, oh, he went. Oh, he rear eight. His rear end just came out. Yeah, that's not going to work. Yeah. I'm still speculating the worn tires because, as we saw last lap on the last. They burn tires. They're not yeah. worn out, but. Well, they burn. well, yeah, true. Actually, I had to say burnt tires. As we saw in the last corner, Dodo went really wide and. I think that is because he is now overdriving his tires, because he's actually. Yeah, sorry, three to go this time by, by the way, because they just beat the clock. They're doing 104 lap times, and it was 2:10 at the line, so they actually have three more full laps to go. Go on. Yeah, and um, yeah, that was basically it. I just think Soto kind of lost his chances. He just waited too long for to do the pass from Diesel which caused him to overdrive his tires and which caused for a pretty major major mistake on the last corner and now Camini and Alitalo is are quite far away and Dietzel is like barely Not taking... unreachable though. Yeah, One not... big mistake from Alitalo and it's it's back to the pack again. Yeah, but Mary and Dietzel has to take a very good draft from Camini now. Oh, oh, Camini went sideways! <laughs> oh, and he... Oh, and he's oh, oh, oh he's out. Right. And now, actually, Alatalo has. That's the, now we're oh. actually very, very yes. close of celebrating Alatalo's early victory because it's 0.9 of a second between him and Dietzel. And uh, from what we saw that, uh, earlier in the race, Dietzel was lacking top speed, even with uh, Diego Comini's like double draft, he was still lacking top speed at the end of the straight. So we have got ourselves two laps to go. In fact, one and a half laps to go as so they go up the hill. You see, on my side, it's a little bit further back. Number 10 car from position 10 has broken his engine. We are like this. Sergio Alvarez. Yeah, Sergio Alvarez broke his engine uh, when there's 40 seconds in the clock anymore. That that sucks, and by the way, because Diego Comuni, right. Comuni, that Diego, uh, Diego Comuni actually DNFs at P10, and Sergio Alvarez has 35 seconds of distance to Diego Comuni to take that P10 with a DNF car. 
So um, it's actually, actually... going to be Curtis who's going to move himself up into the tenth position because he is still circulating on the race track. Alberto will move up into the eleventh position. We have got ourselves sixteen seconds left on the play clock. So this is going to be the white flag lap now. Yeah, it's fine. Heike giving it. It's going in inside of uh, Gerald Langeveld and clean pass for Heike. It takes the P8. So, on to the white flag clap, and Diesel has closed up the gap, it's half a second. Last time by, he was a full oh. four tenths of a second faster than Alex Paolo. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be, if it's gonna be, it's gonna be one last corner, uh, last corner dive in. Yeah. yeah. He, he surely doesn't have enough time to get, uh, catch him on this race, and somebody's having a barbecue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, Sergio it, Alvarez is... Yeah, he's struck with the brute car, and he's shown the meatball flag, but he's not coming in. Which but might Alatalo is not going to like this. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Diesel is close. Diesel is very close, and this will come down to the last quarter, two quarters perhaps. And oh. Alatalo gets a good run. You see that both have to move out of the way. You see the lap car does off. get out of the way, but Diesel is not quite close enough as they come down into the final two quarters. Will Diesel make a last minute dive bomb? No, he won't. He gets sideways into the second class corner. Alatalo is going to come out of the final corner. I've got a lump in my throat once again, ladies and gentlemen, because Alatalo wins. And at the same time, we have the battle going on for P7. Hey, can give it and take the P7. In the last lap, uh, there's something wrong with Scott Hanley's car. He's very... Scott Hanley is struggling a lot. What, ha what happened to Scott? Um, I think he saw a little bit of damage to his front. We'll get confirmation of that in a moment. But he lost himself a couple of positions. Actually, I think he was just too far on the inside line, down into the carousel. He caught the curb, last got sideways. Corner. No, he's not going to make a pass. But uh, Hanley, for Hanley, so he got a little bit sideways in the centre of the carousel. That put him onto the grass, and then he wasn't able to defend and keep that position from um, Langved and also Heike Tivenham. Tivenham moves up into seventh position on the final lap, but Alitalo wins. What a surprise. Does anyone really care? Al Alitalo, <laughs> do you care that you just won the race? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was nice to win, but god damn it, I hate it that uh, I actually shifted to third and was slow in the corner. And well, like not, a not, not necessarily took Diego out, but you know, it was my fault that he, he crashed. So I, uh, it's not a good way to end the race. But you do win. Well done. Arika, one yeah, question. I guess so. Yeah, sure. Did you burn your tires on the last few laps? Because I was speculating here that your drawing was looking a bit wobbly from side to side on the corners. Were you just having issues with the tires, or was it just reason as the driver uh i guess it was just me i mean the spotter started yelling something like two laps of fuel left five laps of fuel left and that got me confused as in did i have enough and it turned out i just ran out as i crossed the finish line so uh i was a bit worried about that and i you know lost some concentration there i guess yeah okay so it wasn't the burnt tires that i was speculating uh, no, not in this car, it shouldn't be that much of an issue, especially at this, this track. Ja sitten yeah. kysymys suomeksi, että tota... Ö, oliko sellainen kisa kun odotit vai... Tossa ainakin Enzo Kantalla oli pikkasen... Enzo Kantalla oli pikkasen ongelmia tossa... Tuli parikin tommoista niin kuin isoa kolaria pienestä osumasta, mutta tota... Yllätytkö kuinka vähällä tappelulla pääsi? Joo tota... Otin huonon startin siinä alussa, niin Omar pääsi ohi, mutta onneksi käytin nolla siipeä ja tota, pääsin sitten suoralla, sillä pitkällä suoralla ohi ja silleen, että pystyn peittämään sitä linjankin. Niin. Yllättävän helposti pääsi, siitä rykkäinen kakaan jää sivuutta. Harmittavaa, että vaihoin vahingossa kolmoselle tuohon mutkaan, otin, otin Diokan pihalle. Väh, olisin kyllä odottanut vähän enemmän kamppailua. Uh, will any additional questions in English? Um, actually, I want to than... ask a question. However, um, I'll ask Jonas. Um, Jonas, how great is it that Rukko Alatalo won today? <laughs> uh, it's really good for Riku. He's the best alien, and uh, I think he will he will be owning the series. Thanks, Jonas. Let's run through your final race results. Riku Ala, I can't shift down into third gear without accidentally almost causing an incident, comes home in the first position. About half a second back from Maurice Dietzel, who comes home in second. Omasato finishes third in the number one machine. Tom Lafanet in fourth. And Francisco uh, Dritti Albert in the fifth position. Magic Le Morte in sixth. Heiki Kievenen in seventh. Um, Gerard Van Ligavid in eighth. 
Scott Hanley in ninth, and then David Skaper at Curtis rounds out your top 10. Nine cars finish on the lead lap. Your retirees, Joshua Hardy, Kai Neiman, Sarah Hortony, um, Etta Cantor, Marcus Pappenbrock, Diego Comedy, all out of the race. You only, what a professional broadcast this has been. Yeah, definitely. This has been like uh, <clears throat> a rather interesting race. And uh, just like uh, uh, almost reminded me of the uh, Olden Park race. Uh, I don't. Uh, what, what series was that? We were having like six commentators uh, on for like a 25 minute race. I can't remember. Like... Oh. Okay, well. The uh, race is 49. 79. Yeah, yeah. 79. Like, a little 79, yeah. Um, so. Let's uh, have a quick view of what's happening next week. Ah, Olden Park with no chicane. So it's going to be the uh, basically the only rational Olden Park layout. So, and um, uh, I personally hate that track because it's narrow, but it's still tricky. Uh, like, uh, like tricky, tricky, because Lime Rock Park was tricky, but it was uh, somewhat slower than Olden Park is. And Olden Park has like off-camber corners, downhills, slopes, uh, uh, blind, blind apex is uh, basically everything that uh, I personally, as a driver, would hate having on a real racetrack. Kevin, did you enjoy your first broadcast of her? Yeah, actually, it was very nice to do a broadcast. I loved doing it. Absolutely fantastic. And you might sit here, and not see, but hear me in the future, hopefully, if you only won't get mad. Of how shit I am. Why would I get mad? <laughs> I don't know. I, outside of the fact that Will cut off his dreads, but... Right. <laughs> but yeah, next week, Alton Park... Will, what happened? Did you catch what? that guy with the lawnmower? Um, I still have my dreads. What? Guys, how long what was that picture then? I tied him up. Um, oh. Guys, let me ask, why lawnmower is related to Alton Park? I know there's a lot of grass on the track, and there's going to be some accidents, but... Because it's in Cheshire, and in Cheshire, in England, everyone on a Sunday afternoon goes out and mows their lawn because they have nothing better to do with their lives. And on that bombshell, don't forget to check out the Will and Dave show every Friday, 4pm Eastern, live on Glacier TV, where we get to hear more about Will Vincent Treadlocks and how fun life is. Um, next week, because of the fact we've got ourselves Alton Park, we're going to have to have six commentators. So we'll have Rick Alessano <laughs> commentating from Incar. We'll have Kevin Bluewood. We'll have Yoni Backman. We'll get Jonas the Curry up in here as well. We might even get Rob Koff to join us and even maybe Liam Jenkins. Myself, Will Vincent, Yoni Backman, <laughs> Rick Alatulu, and Kevin Bluewood. We'll see you all next week. What a professional broadcast this has been.